Since global positioning modules first became available to the masses, their accuracy has improved exponentially, and a large contributor to that improved accuracy is real-time kinematics, or RTK. Hi, I'm Rob Reynolds, creative technologist here at SparkFun Electronics, and today we're going to talk about how to achieve millimeter accuracy using RTK. Over the past few years, we've put a lot of effort into unlocking the potential of RTK by releasing many products and resources to help our customers achieve millimeter level accuracy in their GIS applications. If you've never utilized RTK in a GIS project, it may seem a bit confusing, but we're here to help shed some light on three methods you can use to utilize the power of RTK. But first, what exactly is RTK? How does it work? And how can we utilize it to get millimeter accuracy in our global positioning projects? Let's dive in. These days, most everyone has a cell phone capable of receiving GNSS signals, which is great for giving us our general location. Our location is found by calculating the distance between a receiver and the satellites in space. It all comes down to timing. It sounds simple enough, but the problem is that things such as geomagnetic storms or even relativistic effects cause orbiting clocks to tick slightly faster than they would on Earth. These mere microsecond differences between orbiting clocks and clocks on Earth lead to inaccuracies. And these disturbances cause most receivers, like those in our phones, to be accurate to within about a meter and a half in any direction. And for most things, that's pretty good. But sometimes a few meters just won't cut it. So how do I go from knowing where I am in this area to knowing exactly where I dropped this marble? Without diving too deeply into the calculations behind real-time kinematics, it's a technique that uses correction data from a known position. But how? Well, we all know that global positioning is possible due to signals coming from the multiple satellite constellations whizzing by about 20,000 kilometers over our heads. The GNS module we have with us, referred to as the rover, receives signals from, ideally, multiple satellites at any given time. Taking the data it receives and doing some crazy math, your module's position can be determined. However, with interference like atmospheric anomalies, your position can only be determined down to a sphere of about three meters. Real-time kinematics generally uses the addition of a fixed base station. There are commercial base stations that can be used, however, you can also set up your own base station. For a temporary base, you'll set up your base and then let it survey in for about five minutes. Once that module's location is determined, it sends ranging info to the rover. Since your base unit needs to be within about 10 kilometers of your rover, your relative position can be determined with much greater accuracy, from about three meters down to about 14 millimeters, thus improving the positional accuracy of your rover. Hopefully you get the general idea of how RTK works, but I think it's best if we actually show you some use cases and the hardware that makes it possible. Now you can utilize your own base station, you can take advantage of existing base stations, or you can utilize correction data from an L-band satellite, which requires no base station at all. We'll take a look at all three and some options on how to best use them. First, we'll look at using your own base station. Here we have an example of a temporary base station setup. It consists of an L1, L2 antenna connected to our RTK Express. Now inside this Express, you'll find one of these, the U-Block ZF9P module. The module on this little circuit board is really the star of the show. It's what gives you three-dimensional accuracy at roughly the width of your fingernail. Here at SparkFun, we have a whole host of ways for utilizing this module, whether for prototyping or in enclosed surveying products. Also in the RTK Express is the ESP32, which is used for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communications for, among other things, transmitting and receiving correction data. So let's see what it takes to set this up as a base unit. After powering up, oh, it's bright out here. After powering up, we'll go set up base mode. There we go. All right, you can see we're receiving from 22 satellites. Now, after about 60 seconds, this will be considered surveyed in, and then we can start receiving correction data on our rover unit. For the rover, we're using the SparkFun RTK facet. Housed under the dome of this all-in-one survey grade tool is the U-Block ZF9P and ESP32, along with the L1, L2 antenna. No hardware connections need to be made other than affixing to a monopod. While we are using the RTK facet as a rover for this demonstration, this tool can also be used as a base station. Now it's worth noting that when using this method, the temporary base station, the positional accuracy is relative, not absolute, meaning that your positional accuracy is between the base and the rover. So if you wrap up the day, head back to camp, then go out and reset your base station the next day, even in the very same spot, 
That base station may, after surveying in, think it's up to a meter and a half away from where it was last time. And since the positional accuracy is relative, your rover's absolute position could also be a meter and a half from where it was yesterday. If your situation calls for absolute positioning, you always have the option of setting up your own permanent base station to reference whenever you need. You can also add your permanent base station to a community of permanent base stations through a service like UNAVCO to allow anyone to reference it with their own rover. Permanent base stations are often put inside of a housing with a dedicated internet connection via either a mini computer or even a Raspberry Pi. They typically survey in for around 24 hours and then send raw GNSS data to a processing center for what's called precise point positioning. This gives your base station the most accurate, permanent, absolute positioning. If a permanent base station is the solution for you, we have a link to a tutorial in our description below. Another option for your base station needs is the SparkFun RTK reference station. Now this little unit makes it incredibly easy to set up a fixed location NTRIP server, enabling RTK for rovers. It even has an NTP server for equipment synchronization and an astoundingly accurate time base. We've basically simplified the process of creating your own base station by building one for you, in case you just want to buy an already assembled unit to send correction data to your rovers. Of course, we've taken everything we've learned while developing our other RTK products and used that knowledge to make this unit as fast, easy to power, and simple to use as possible. If you don't have a base station or don't want to maintain one, but still want to utilize RTK corrections in your location project, you can use existing base stations from paid services such as Ublox's Point Perfect or Skylark. These services provide access to a nationwide network of base stations for a monthly fee. Now, there are, however, free options as well. In North and Central America, UNAVCO has a host of base stations, and luckily for us, there's one just a few miles away. Now, we've got a video that dives deeper into setting up and using UNAVCO, and there's a link to that in the description below. Another option for receiving correction data is L-Band, which we offer on one of our RTK facets. We're here on location somewhere in eastern Colorado to show that even without an existing base station, we can still obtain millimeter accuracy. L-Band is really just another source for receiving correction data, although this one solves the problem of not having access to a terrestrial source whether that's your own base station or one of the base stations from the companies and organizations we talked about. Now, somewhere over the Southern Hemisphere, there's an Immersat satellite flying in geosynchronous orbit. A geosynchronous satellite is one that maintains its position in space relative to a specific longitude on Earth. It's about 20,000 kilometers away, but in situations like this, it's our best bet for correction data. Thanks to the surveyor-grade L1-L2 L-band antenna, and the NEO D9S inside the SparkFun RTK Facet L-Band, we can receive both GNSS data from the four satellite constellations, as well as L-Band correction data from that separate satellite. That combination gives us, in effect, an overhead base station, which will allow us to obtain that millimeter accuracy even in the most remote of places. The capabilities of RTK that are now available to the general public are frankly staggering, and they're only going to get better. Whether you're looking to use your own base station, use existing base stations, or go anywhere with L-Band, real-time kinematics can provide that millimeter accuracy that you're looking for for all your global positioning projects. Now, hopefully now you have a basic understanding of what RTK is and what it has to offer. But if you want to do a deeper dive, be sure to check out the links to the resources in the description below and over at sparkfun.com. And as always, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking.